Hi, I'm Liz. And I'm Rhea. Welcome to Karma's My Bitch, a podcast about love, sex, connection, abundance, joy, purpose, peace, and how life isn't simply the stories we tell ourselves. All these big questions that I seem to have all the answers of as a child, Mm -hmm. it feels like I taught myself out of them. Yeah. And one of the ones that has remained unresolved for me Mm -hmm. is the idea of something bigger. I think that we hurt ourselves when we hold on to or talk about the thing that is bigger because I think our real world experience makes it seem like it's something that it is not because it was never meant to be. When we think bigger, we look outside to this notion that either it means creating a big following or becoming a billionaire with a really big platform or you know what I mean? Like we have very limited ideas of what bigger no, is, for sure. which does help. I mean, that does kind of contribute to the confusion. I think, right? yeah, that contributes to the confusion is like, what does it mean to impact life? Yeah. What does it mean to change the world? Yes. What does it mean to be successful? Mm-hmm. But also for me, it was, is there anything more than this world? Yeah. Could it really be? Yeah. The reality is that if you can conceive it, it can be. It just may not be exactly as you had conceived it. What I think what messed us up is that we were attaching our fifth dimensional ideas and that consciousness to a third dimensional reality. So that in order for us to know that this was possible, we needed certain things to line up. And when they didn't line up, it was like, well, then that, it can't be, it can't, it can't work. What we didn't understand at the time, which I'm coming to learn, that in order to do what we needed to be able to do, which was to help usher in fifth dimensional consciousness, we also had to become very good students of third dimensional consciousness. And as we said, fifth dimensional consciousness and third dimensional consciousness are incompatible. In many ways, we had to forget our 5D knowing because if we didn't, we would have suffered tremendously, which we did. Which we did. Which we did, but it would have been worse. I mean, that's really effectively what the fall means, that in order to be able to exist within separation, I have to separate a little of myself. Yeah. That's what that is. Because we have to ask ourselves, have we really been happy? Have we, living in rules, being told what love is and what it is not, being told that we are not good enough to make our own decisions, to create our own lives, were we happy? Or were we just trying to survive? I wouldn't say most people were just trying to survive. I don't think anyone was happy. Not fully. Because if if you were even a little bit scared, so you were stockpiling, whether it was money, whether it was love, whether it was experiences, if you were living in YOLO or FOMO or anything like that, mm-hmm. you, then were you really happy? Or were you expecting the other shoe to fall? Oh, no. And even if you weren't expecting the other shoe to fall, it was just, it could have very well just been, I'm going to cope with the fact that I can only be just this happy in life. Yes. And yeah. that's what separation calls us to do because it's not possible no. when you are in separation to be in a place of peace or bliss. And so during 2020, there were points where I really had to sit down and ask myself, you know, mm-hmm. yep. if this is my life, if this is all there is, do I want to live it? Yeah. And honestly, the answer was always no. I knew that in those brief brief fleeting moments where I felt connected, free, powerful, sexy, beautiful, knowing, hopeful, and in love with life, with myself, with the people around me. Mm -hmm. If I couldn't have that anymore, I didn't see the point. Right. And I think at this point, we all have to ask ourselves, is what we have enough? And I think many people avoid and have avoided asking themselves that question because they know what the answer would be and they won't like it. And it will force them to confront their disempowerment in such a way where they could feel very defeated. Like, I don't know how to get myself there. And now that I'm really aware of how how unhappy I am, I'm not sure if I can keep living. Well, that's exactly how I felt so many times. And I can't tell you how I got out of it. I don't know. Maybe, you know, like the angel said in the last episode, they were like... Come on. But <laughs> no, like, but you would never know. take full credit. It's up to you. And that's why we're always banging on about purpose, about finding that relationship with yourself, because that's what gets you through the post fuck this moment where you do contemplate, is this really worth it? Am I worth it? Is my purpose worth it? And how can we think that we're worth it and our purpose is worth it when all the time we've been told, 
that you're, you're not worth it. You're nothing. <laughs> you're small. You're small. Unless you conform, then you're nothing. Right. Because being ourselves and living our purpose means that we cannot conform. And so it's a double-edged sword. I mean, we're con- we're constantly caught in this catch-22. And if we keep applying the sort of 3D standards of trying to prove to others that we are worth it, that we have worth, and that we are deserving, that we do matter... We're always going to be caught in that cycle, in that loop. And it's really hard to break out of it. Look, Ugh, even now, so hard. even now, even you and I doing this podcast, there are still going to be moments where we are going to question, where we're going to, you know, <laughs> are we ask, a little crazy? <laughs> you know, I mean, I literally, there are sometimes I look at you and I'm like, is she hearing voices in her head or is she hearing voices through her head? And if it's the first one, I'm fucked. <laughs> you know, then I think, am I crazy? Am I crazy? And then things work in different ways or things don't work. And I'm like, well, when they, if it doesn't work, then yes, I am crazy. And if it does work, then no, I'm not. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's not, none of this is easy. And I'm not saying it's going to get easier. I don't know what the fuck is going to happen. No, it doesn't get easier. But as you said, you get to a point where you cannot not be yourself. There are those critical moments of massive self doubt. Yeah. There is that God, it would have been easier if, and you can replay that all you want, but once you do own your truth and you see it for what it is and you see yourself for who you are, you really cannot go back. There's a part of me now that knows who I am Mm -hmm. and knows what I want. And And what you won't settle for. What's interesting is that we have started seeing a growing number of people putting themselves out there with regards to their faith. Yes. Me included. I know. Yay. I never would have been someone who spoke about my faith. And so it's nice because on one side, people are really connecting without their egos because egos would have stopped us from doing this every single time before, right? Ego is what tells you you're right or wrong. Yeah. So ego would be the one going, oh, you could end up being wrong. This Mm -hmm. is going to be a problem, Mm -hmm. et cetera. Whereas now, you know, we're being able to connect and kind of see each other's souls a little bit more, which is really nice. Yeah. And like we're finding a common ground. But in trying to find common ground, we're still trying, we're still existing in a state of separation. The labels are keeping us boxed. I am on mission. I am a star seed. I am an indigo. I am a light bringer. I am crystals and rainbows and, you know, all of it, right? Like, but also I'm just more important than you. And I remember when all the 2020 stuff started happening and I turned to my friend and I was like, oh my God, it's fucking happening. And I was almost a bit scared. And she was like, yeah, but does that make you feel like you're better than everyone else because you knew it was going to happen? And there was a part of me that thought, that's a good fucking question. Because if it is, if I'm genuinely sitting here and thinking I know more than someone else, Mm -hmm. I am putting another label on myself. I am separating myself from the person next to me. And I'm only seeing my identity by what I'm here to do, not who I am, which therefore means I'm still living in 3D and I'm not living my purpose. Oh, totally. Because ultimately, unless somebody is guiding you toward your own power, then they're not serving you or their own purpose. Well, they're serving their ego. Exactly. But it's still going to take time for spirituality to become so mainstream that it becomes normalized to the point where it's not extraordinary anymore. And it's the lack of extraordinariness about it that will then allow us to be able to integrate it the way we need to be able to integrate it in our lives. So spirituality has its own othering and that's going to be coming to a head over the next several years. The reality is that some of it is going to quickly become bullshit the more evolved we become and the more our consciousness evolves into a higher consciousness where none of that shit matters. Who cares if my soul originated in Arcturus? I don't care. It's like telling people that I'm from California. Well, also, you know what California is like. You know, there were certain modalities that were necessary for 3D in order to help keep people from losing their shit. Astrology was certainly one of them. Not only because it's an ancient practice, but because it's one that's harder, not impossible to, but harder to corrupt. But as Ellen said... Because there's a particular science to it. Yeah. But as remember when Ellen said Mm -hmm. that actually anyone who's... It's not about... Whilst it's not corruptible necessarily, Mm -hmm. the person who's using it could be corrupted. Because if they they do anything to make you feel more scared, 
then it's not keeping in light because obviously fear is not right. light. Well, that was always the challenge of anybody working in 3D, right? Of how easily any practitioner, facilitator, psychic, whatever could be corrupted because it is very difficult to have a spiritual practice in three-dimensional separation. Mm-hmm. You need to have divested enough of your ego, your karma, and your fears or the shit won't work or will only work a little bit yeah. or it won't come through the way it needs to. Mm-hmm. If you're going to call fear, the more fear there is, a dark age. Mm -hmm. So that the less fear there is, Mm -hmm. it would be a light age or Mm -hmm. the enlightenment. Ah. And then the enlightened, because they're holding light, not fear. Yes. So any practice that you would have used Mm -hmm. that would have made you scared, Mm. right, isn't in the light. Right. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. But that would be what makes sense because if you're in 3D, there's always going to be that polarity. That's why I was never into dabbling. I had friends who were more into dabblers, were always happy to see a palm reader or a psychic, or, and I never did. Like, I actually really eschewed dabbling because I instinctively understood that not everything that was from spirit was of spirit. And with our own evolving consciousness, we're coming to a point where we aren't really going to need this anymore. And that's the point. We are meant... To not just make ourselves obsolete as teachers, but we're meant to make the practice of spirituality obsolete. Because everyone knows that, the, that they can create their own world because exactly. they're their own God. That they, exactly. That they are powerful enough, that they are in their own power, that they can own their truth, speak their truth, and not live in fear. So spirituality is going to have its zeitgeist. It's still just building to it, but it still won't have happened. Like it's still not going to like really peak until, oh, not for a while. Uh, <laughs> it's building like still. Like till where? About 2028 okay. will probably be its zeitgeist. I mean, that's at the time of this recording. I mean, yeah. God knows. Who knows what? Because people are still going to need to come into and through their issues. But I think that it's important to understand that how people continue to kind of, as we see people grow and evolve and come out of their spiritual closets and serve their mission, it's going to start looking a little different. So in 3D, a lot of spiritual practitioners or teachers, and I just mean older generations, right? Like the sort of Ellen's a bit, they really needed to hold space in the large way, peace, love, right? Because that's all you could do to help bridge separation. As we come into 5D, Mission is going to start looking a little different. It's going to start looking more like, I need to stand for something. It's not about my brand. It's not about how I'm going to market myself. It's not about how I'm going to be different from other people in this field. It's the, how can I best express my purpose and why I am here? I'm not going to be just here for peace and love. My purpose And what I'm standing for is going to be a lot more specific than that. This year, 2021, is about identifying what we stand for. Because I think 2020, when we were so locked in our fears, a lot of people were, I mean, it was actually longer than that, but there was a lot of reacting going on. So nobody was really standing for anything. They were just standing against something. And that's all fear-based. That's all ego. You can't tell me what to do. If I think you're going to tell me what to do, I'm just going to go do the opposite, all that other, you know, childish bullshit. But in order to come into our own power and define what our lives will look like, it's about coming into being able to answer, what do I stand for? Do I stand for integrity, honesty, transparency? It could be a few things. I Do I stand, not a few things for everybody, but it, it really depends on where your values are. What does your authentic self look like? Who are you when you are expressing? And it doesn't yourself. have to be in a word. Like if you ask me, I wouldn't be able to tell you what that is necessarily in a word or in whatever. It's more mm-hmm. just kind of like, am I able to express my truth? And mm-hmm. then once I express it enough, am I able to name it? Yeah. Because you need to first like express it first. Mm-hmm. And I do think that kind of the truth of who we are does extend far beyond who we perceive ourselves to be today. 2018, I came to you. I don't know why. I then started working, <laughs> you know, and I was just working towards managing my life in the structure. And then it became, let's break the structure. And then it became, let's rebuild a new structure. Mm-hmm. You know, who I was three years ago to who I am today, who I was 10 years ago to who I am today. You know, 
the truth of who we are extends far beyond what we can see in this moment. Mm -hmm. But the only way in which we can allow ourselves to grow and evolve is to be true to who we are today, because then that natural growth and evolve happens. And yes, that does involve some of our perceptions, our beliefs, aspects of our life to fall away, but not necessarily, oh, I love this person. And because I'm going to be this bigger person, they can't join me. It's not like we're going to lose all our relationships and lose our homes and lose our roofs and be destitute on the street because we've chosen the path of the preacher. Mm -hmm. It's much more that we're going to lose the limiting beliefs that held us back from believing that everything is possible and that we are that powerful yeah. and that we can have everything we want, how we want it. Yeah. And I think that does mean that things will fall away. Yeah. They don't have to be things we want to keep. We will fall away. Yeah. We will outgrow ourselves. Mm -hmm. And that's not a bad thing. No, it can be a bit scary, to be fair. And I think it'll have us wanting to look for and maybe grasp onto other things as a result. The idea then, if I'm not this, if I'm not just this human self, right, this like smaller self, then I must be this big soul. And therefore, that it's going to teach me more. And that's fine. That could always be a sort of evolutionary process, you right? Mean, and you're going to teach me more. Well, if I, if I want to look at the origin of my soul, maybe it's going to speak to, it's going to allow me to understand aspects of who I am that I couldn't have known or thought about when I'm just focusing on my smaller 3D self. Everything is to serve our growth and evolution. So even the new age spirituality and the ideas and the ideals and practices can still serve us, but they just, we just won't end there. And I know that sounds scary, but it's as you said about 3D and 5D and how you can't stop one and start another. We won't even almost notice. Mm -mm. It's just one day you look back and you're like, oh my God, that's who I was. It's like when you look at old pictures and you think, God, I was so young then. Mm -hmm. But you don't feel like you've grown up. You just somehow have. We're not here judging. We're not judging other people's spiritual practices. We're not here. We're not judging other people's spiritual beliefs. It's just about understanding that. No, it's I've some, been there. I've done all of them. Yeah. The whole point is understanding. And they helped me. Each one got me to the next space. Yeah. Most of them do help. But as we grow, they become limiting and we're here to become limitless. And so until we can free ourselves from any practice and seeing that we know it's best for us, we won't really be free. Thank you for listening. For more information, articles, and inspiration, find us at karmasmybitch.com and at karmasmybitch.insta. And if you liked what you heard, please subscribe and leave us a review.